You know what's kind of unfortunate to look at? If you go over to the Flyers and their Elite Prospects page, just seeing all the names who have yet to suit up for a game is kind of demoralizing. Kiefer Bellows, okay, I mean, he's just new here. It's not really the same type of situation, but Ryan Ellis, Artem Anisimov, Couturier, Brown, Bobby Brink, Cam Atkinson, y'all are missing out on some guys, and this is not really the best way to start out a season, you know? However, when it comes to the Flyers and how they've actually been performing, despite all of the absences, Take a look at this. The Flyers, at the time of recording this audio, are tied for first in the Metro Division with 10 points in seven games played. They are a top five team in the NHL. If you sort by points percentage, they are fourth. And things have never looked this great in a while. This is a lot different than we thought the Flyers would actually be starting out the year because, hey, this team had so little confidence from the coach, they had nothing to build off of according to that interview, and I think that kind of had a lot of people worried about what the Flyers would be able to do to kick off 22-23. But the results don't lie. This is a team that is getting wins. But the question is, how exactly is this possible? I mean, you take a look at what's been happening on the ice. It's not necessarily like the Flyers have been absolutely dominating. Like, they're not a Tampa Bay Lightning going up against the Montreal Canadiens in the finals type vibe. But what has been happening here is a little bit better. Now, if you had been watching the channel for a few days now, you probably would have seen that we had recently made a video talking about the Flyers and the idea of them making a trade with the Calgary Flames involving Travis Konechny. Now, in that video, I had this certain philosophy that I threw out there and I kind of addressed saying, hey, the Flyers are doing really well. They're winning games. Why would they want to go out there and trade a guy like Konechny? And in the video, I said, hey, you know, they are winning games. They're doing well, but... Just how projectable is this Flyers team towards being able to play like this for the next 82 games? Or not 82, but like, you know, 70-something games. In order to illustrate our point, let's go over onto the Philadelphia Flyers subreddit, as this post made by I Gonna Wreck You VGC, <laughs> it's a very funny username, kind of goes out there and describes what's been happening. This season, across seven games, the Flyers are being outshot significantly, yet they keep winning. This season, the Flyers have been outshot a total of 248 to 191, yet they've outscored their opponents 21 to 17. Flyers goalies have a save percentage of 931, while holding opposing goalies to a save percentage of 890. Interestingly enough, the Flyers have outshot teams 64 to 60 in losses and have been outshot 188 to 127 in wins. They've only outshot a team in one winning effort this season, having outshot the Canucks 31 to 30. Too long didn't read, the way to win is to shoot less than the other team. Now that is a really interesting piece of data to actually acknowledge that the Philadelphia Flyers are winning more games when they get outshot, and they lose when they outshoot their opponents. Part of the reason why this defensive battle for some reason is working out is because Carter Hart, the goaltender for this guy who has faced a ton of ups and downs over the past few years, has been playing lights out. Ever since making his debut with the Flyers after being an absolute stud with the Everett Silvertips in the WHL in 2017-18, he has become a pretty conversational name amongst Flyers lore. He kicked off his NHL stint three years ago at the age of 21, posting up a 9-17 and a 2-8-3 goals against in 31 games. Definitely not bad at all for a guy who is brand new in the NHL as a goalie in his early 20s. He then made Team Canada at the World Championships, he won all the games that he played, and he had a 9-6-4 save percentage, not to mention a .70 goals against. Everybody was saying that Carter Hart was going to be the future, and there was much reason to believe that this was going to be the case. The season after that, he played all right, a 9-14 save percentage in 43 games played, but he had a 9-2-6 as the Flyers lost in the second round of the bubble playoffs. Then you go through somewhat of the down years. This is where Carter Hart started to get a little bit more, let's just say, worse. He had an 877 save percentage in 27 games played in 2020-2021, and as the Flyers started losing out on man games, as the Flyers started losing out on games in total, and as Carter Hart sort of went down the drain too, a lot of people were saying, yeah, I mean, we know he's young, we know he's definitely talented, it's just, 
he's been having a rough go. And last season, that didn't really get itself any better. I mean, it was a tad better. He had a 905 save percentage instead of the 877s from before, but he still was at a 316 goals against, which definitely isn't great by any standard at all either. This is why when you talk about what's been happening this year, Carter Hart has sort of revived his career. In five games played so far, the guy has two goals against, so he's got 10 goals, or excuse me, a two goals against average, excuse me. So he's got 10 goals against in the five games he's played, and he has a 947 save percentage. You go over to the top of the NHL of goaltenders right here, and Carter Hart is right there. For goals against, Carter Hart is a top 10 goalie in the league, and for save percentage, he's fourth overall. Craig Anderson, by the way, has been fantastic. It's kind of weird to see how he's revived his career in Buffalo, but Carter Hart has sort of revived everything as well. Here's a list from MoneyPuck.com talking about goaltenders who have expected the most goals against. So amongst the goalies that are on this list, these guys have had the highest quantity of high danger chances against them. Carter Hart is third behind Quick and Demko. Meanwhile, if you go over to goals saved above expected, which means how many of these expected goals or how many goals that are supposed to be scored against this guy end up getting stopped, Carter Hart is right there, second in the league, behind Jake Ottinger. Now, these numbers aren't necessarily saves or save percentages. What they pretty much calculate is the quality of the chances going against them and whether or not the goaltender stops it. Pretty much what it's saying is that amongst goalies in the NHL who have had shots against them that probably should have been goals, Carter Hart has stopped 9.7 goals that should have been scored against him. That's the second most in the NHL. There are some more comments on the Flyers subreddit on the same post. By the way, the link will be in the description if you want to go ahead and read it. Going over Carter Hart and what he's been doing so far as well. This comment from Stu514 compares last year's seven-game start to the season to this year's. Last year, they had a 4-2-1 record in seven games, a plus-four goal differential, and a 9-2-2-7 save percentage, 16% shooting percentage, and they got outshot by five and a quarter shots per game. It's fun, Hart's been amazing, but it feels very similar to last season. Gravy Boy Captain goes out there and spells a little bit of pessimism on the situation. It's identical to last year. Authentic fans know what's really going on, though. It's definitely the hard-nosed new style of hockey that's winning. Sometimes these stat nerds can't comprehend. There is close to 0% chance that the luck in Carter Hart's level will run out. I tell you. Other comments are saying that it's not sustainable, everybody's talking about blocking shots, and by the way, my heart goes out to John Tortorella, the shot-blocking man. I remember here in Vancouver when he got the Sedins blocking shots, and that was kind of interesting, but at the same time, it's like, yeah, no, if you're blocking shots, it means you don't have the puck, so that's kind of another thing to pay attention to. I mean, if the other team has the puck a lot, it kind of explains why they're going out there and getting as many shots as they are per game, but still... Carter Hart has been pretty good, and for the Philadelphia Flyers, I mean, take a look at the scoring on their team as well. Kevin Hayes, over a point per game, 10 points in 7 games with 9 assists on the season. Konechny, I had him on my fantasy team, I picked him up because he's been really good. Tony D'Angelo, I reluctantly picked him up towards the end of our draft as well because I needed the defenseman, and so far he's got 6 points in 7 games, so good on me for taking Tony D. But Carter Hart really has been the guy that I've been cheering for the most when it comes to the Flyers and their resurgence. We'll see how long this lasts. We know last year they finished off pretty poorly in the standings, and they weren't really in a position to get a playoff berth. But right now, I mean, they're doing pretty well. So we'll see where the... Philadelphia Flyers go over the next few months. We had been talking about in prior videos whether or not the team would be willing to trade some of their guys away. That Calgary connect me thing was one that I talked about, but it's all contingent on the idea of the Flyers kind of rounding out their game and Carter Hart kind of coming back down to earth because sure, while it's amazing, he's got a 947 save percentage. I mean, he's probably not going to finish the year with those numbers. Same with Craig Anderson with his 970 and Ottinger with his 960. We'll see where these guys go as the year goes on. But for now, this is your goaltending race. Carter Hart is a top five goaltender in the league after being pretty subpar last year and even worse the year before that. This is a resurgence and I'm all here for it, baby. Talk to the comments your thoughts. I hope you enjoyed this video. And bye.